Anybody else know anything about Andrew Jackson? Where was he from? What did he do? Nobody knows? Teacher language is kind of one of those weird dynamics where um, it weaves throughout. It comes up. It's not something that you plan. Um, you don't know when you're going to need to redirect. You're not going to be able to sit there and say, this is how I'm going to redirect this type of a question, because you really don't know where the students are going to go. Do you know what his job was? He was President of the United States of America. For example, at the beginning of the class, when they all announced that they had no idea who Andrew Jackson was, that was not at all where I thought we were going to be. He was president and he was kind of a controversial president. He's kind of a big deal in Nashville. And so that was here. kind of that moment where I had to redirect the, the entire kind of flow of the lesson. Um, and that's not something that's planned. And I think that teacher language is just like that with your curriculum planning. You're not planning how you're going to interact with that child. It's kind of on the fly um, type of stuff, the way that it weaves through, as long as you're conscious of trying to um, use your words in a certain way. Have y'all heard about what's happening with the $20 bill? Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. We got that one. Okay, what's happening? Somebody? They're putting Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill. Who is she replacing? Uh, she is replacing Andrew Jackson. Good inference. And the thing about teacher language is when you're super conscious of it, when you're saying, okay, now don't say good job. What keeps popping into your head and into your mouth is good job. Um, instead, what I and what I kind of leaned towards when I realized in the very beginning that I was doing that was instead, what is the goal of what's happening right now? So that as I'm seeing that goal be met, I can say, you met that goal. So author's purpose, I saw that when I wanted them to infer and I saw that, I'm able to say, you made an inference and you did great. It's also about seeing that when they're not on the mark, because I think that's sometimes the hardest, is when you know one of the students was not correct in his answer, but was very strong and wanted to share, and kind of letting them know that in that moment, I see where you got that answer from, I see what skill you used, so I can praise the skill that you used, um, but say, this is where you went wrong with using that skill. So what is a suffragette, somebody who went When you tell them that they're wrong, or you don't reinforce what they just did, um, they don't know how to repeat what they just did sometimes. So in that lesson today, when it was, you made an inference there, great. What we saw was the next question, they went really into inferencing. And they went a little too far into inferencing. But they really held on to, I know what the standard was, and I know what I'm trying to do. And so that helped drive the curriculum. And so I think teacher language not only helps you with behavior, but it really helps you move forward in the curriculum as well. I think one of the things that's still a little bit of a challenge for me is that sometimes when um, you are trying to be supportive of a student and direct them in a certain way, you can back yourself into a little bit of a corner. It even happened in the lesson today, where I'm guiding him where I want him to go, but not telling him where I want him to go, and he's just not coming with me. Um, and there's those moments where you do have to just stop and go, this isn't working, so I'm going to say, hey, there's the answer. Read that paragraph, because the, you're not with me. And I think that that's okay, you know, because you also get a really strong understanding of where the kids are at. Because if you're guiding them and they're still not following you, then you realize that you didn't scaffold the way that you should have or that you really need to go back to the drawing board and say, where in this skill did I miss something? You think good? Did he do good? Incorporating the strategy has been a very positive change for my students. Um, I've seen them um, be more willing to try, um, to try things and go out on a limb. Um, they will read in class, they will um, articulate. Watching them work in groups and their ability to look at each other and said, I eliminated A and B, what do you think, da da da, has come from those kind of conversations happening with me because they need that modeled and they need that practiced. And once we've done that, not only has behavior changed, um, but because it's a really about what choice are you making right now and, and, and giving them back control. It's a slow process. Like It's not going to be two weeks in, all of a sudden you're seeing all of these gains and it's great. I think it's about seeing with effort, you improve and your students improve. We bring in our own bias. We bring in our My own My ability thoughts. to now say, you know, a year, two years in to the practice, being able to say, hey, I see this in this child. I was able to see that interaction. I was able to see this and to be able to, and you're not going to have that right away. So it's kind of stick with it and don't see it as a chore. Um, see it because it really will make curriculum and behavior improve.